From Washington, Jay, thank you for joining us this morning. You just heard Preet Bharara right there suggesting that he thought he had a feeling of deja vu when he was watching James Comey's testimony because of the phone calls he received uh, during the transition. Do you believe the president was trying to cultivate a relationship with the then U.S. attorney? I have no idea what the context of that call was or was going to be, and I can't speculate on that. But I would say at the outset, George, and you, you raised this, the issue of the leak from James Comey to his friend at Columbia Law School that was ultimately leaked to the New York Times is unprecedented. I mean, I want everyone to be thinking about this. The current, then current FBI director took contemporaneous notes, put them on a form, used government facilities to do that. If an FBI agent does that, they usually fill out, uh, fill out a form 302. Could you imagine what would happen if an FBI agent then leaked that Form 302 out to the New York Times, what the allegations would be? So this was an unprecedented move. And Preet mentioned the, the issue of executive privilege. Uh, the president and the administration wasn't, they, they did not invoke executive privilege on this hearing. But on these documents, they didn't know what, were, what the contents were. It may well, I would assert, I'm sure it was executive privilege. But... James Comey never gave anyone the opportunity to determine if that was going to but be the didn't, case. Didn't the president they waive any privilege once he yeah. talked about the meetings? That's what the, whole, that's what the tweet about the tapes was, was about. Well, the, the, those two don't actually relate. The executive privilege follows on any conversation the president had in the deliberate process. So, again, there was only, you know, we, neither you nor I nor Preet are privy to that conversation. But you have to say, I think anybody looking at this case honestly has to say, there were three things that took place here. One, it was made very clear from the FBI director on multiple occasions that the president had not been and was not under investigation for obstruction of justice. He made that very clear in his written testimony, which is, by the way, part of the record. And number two, and I think, again, the unprecedented nature of this, that there was no evidence, and, and you've had other people on this program, uh, including senators, members of the intelligence community, said there has been no evidence of collusion. So you look at the issue and say, then, what is the role of the special counsel here? And the special counsel allowed James Comey to testify. Um, James Comey said he reviewed his testimony with the special counsel. And you wonder if uh, it, I, I, it's unusual to me, and I've done a lot of cases for 40 years of practicing law almost, and it, at the highest levels, including the Supreme Court, that you have a situation, I think this is unprecedented, where the testimony was reviewed, it was then discussed, and then it was part of that testimony, a large so part are of you suggesting there, are you, are you suggesting there that you and the president and the president's legal team don't have confidence in Robert Mueller to conduct a fair investigation? No, what we're saying is that this, this, look, I mean, Mark Kasowitz, who's the lead lawyer in this case and is in charge of the legal team, has said clearly that he is putting forward a legal uh, team and a legal defense that will address all of the issues. But I think that the unusual situation here, this is unprecedented in our history, is that the, the former executive, uh, former FBI director was the source of a leak. I mean, George, you know, we've all been concerned about leaks. And here, that he was the source of that leak. And, I mean, I think Dianne Feinstein was a bit shocked on this. I think others were. This was not a partisan issue. And you this just was heard, a leak you just of information. heard Preet yeah. say that it might not have been the best yeah. way to do that. But let's go to the underlying substance yeah. of what he said. You're cherry-picking. On the one hand, you say you believe James Comey when he talks about telling the president that he's not under investigation. But the president's denying that James Comey is telling the truth about the Oval Office meeting on February 14th, about his dinner well, with look, the president. The president is saying yeah. he's, he's not telling the truth there. So do you believe, remember, James Comey was under oath. Do you believe that the DOJ should pursue perjury charges against James Comey? I think that what J James Comey has made misstatements to the House and Senate on multiple times during the investigation into Secretary Clinton, where he had to go back, and you know this, George, and had to go back in his correct his testimony. In this very last hearing, he was asked a question regarding the recusal of the Attorney General of the United States, Jeff Sessions. He made a statement that he was not aware of any memorandums explaining that address to him. And the Department of Justice released that on March 2nd, I believe the date was, that in fact a memorandum was sent to the FBI director explaining the basis of the recusal. So, I mean, I, I'm going to lay it on as I would look at it as a lawyer, as I was, if I was preparing, preparing a Supreme Court case. And I think that James Comey's credibility has been brought into question on multiple occasions during the Clinton investigation. And here, look, that's ultimately the special counsel has to weigh that. 
as he makes, uh, does his investigation. But I think it raises serious issues. The president could clear this all up if he released the tapes. Does he have them? Will he release them? The president said he's going to address the issue of the tapes, uh, the, whether the tapes exist or not, next week. That's a decision that the president will make uh, in consultation with his uh, chief lawyer, Mark Kasowitz. And the president said he'll address it next week. But here's the one thing that's clear. Right now, what do you have? A leaked memo that was leaked to The Washington Post, allegedly, because he read in The New York Times, or he read the tweet. But yet, you know, what's also interesting is much of the content of what appeared to be in that memorandum was actually in the New York Times the day before. And then James Comey made this statement, which I find also uh, troubling. He said he issued the release or the disclosure, or what I would say leak of the information through his friend, not even directly, through his friend, in order to draw a special counsel. And the next day, he got one. A couple of quick I think questions. I the thing, as we say in the law, res ipsa locator, the thing speaks for itself. A couple of quick questions before we go. The sure. president said he was willing to testify yeah. under oath. Do you expect him to testify under oath to Robert Mueller? Well, the president made that very clear. He's made the statement of what he would do as far as testifying, if that's, if that's necessary. I, I find it ironic that uh, people are questioning the president when he said he would do that, yet Secretary Clinton, when she was under investigation by James Comey was not put under oath. And I we'll, find that ironic. And finally, will the yeah. president promise sure. not to interfere, not attempt at any time to order the deputy attorney general to fire Robert Mueller? Look, the president, the, the, the president of the United States, as, as we all know, it's a unitary executive. But the president is going to seek the advice of his counsel and inside the government as well as outside. And I'm not going to speculate on what he will or will not do. But right now, the role of the president is to govern the United States of America. He's going to do that. He's going to leave anything else to the lawyers. But I, I can't imagine that that uh, issue is going to arise. But that, again, is an issue that the president uh, with his advisors would discuss if there was a basis. I mean, George, if there was a basis upon which there was a question raised that raised the kind of issues that are serious, as in the situation with James Comey, uh, the president has authority to take action. Whether he would do it is an, ultimately a decision the president makes. I, I think that's complete conjecture and speculation. The Constitution, it's a unitary executive. You know that. You work for a president. Jay Sekulow, thanks very much for your time this morning. George, thanks for having me.